Welcome to the Module 4 discussion, Lysogenic Conversion, by myself, Mariella Roper. This presentation will describe lysogenic conversion as well as discuss some key differences between lysogenic and lytic replication. Bacteriophages, otherwise known as viruses, are composed of DNA or RNA enclosed in a capsid protein. Because they lack any organelles, viruses must rely on host cells for replication. This is achieved in one of two ways either lytic or lysogenic replication. In both methods, viruses depend on their host cells' protein synthesis pathways to reproduce. However, we will first focus on lysogenic conversion before discussing key differences in the two methods of replication. Lysogenic conversion is a form of viral reproduction. It begins with a virus injecting its genetic material into that of a bacterial host. From there, the virus's genetic material integrates itself with the host genome. The viral DNA is able to express only repressor genes so that it is not being expressed and thus can remain undetectable to the host cell. With the host genome integrated with the viral genetic information, it is now known as a prophage or provirus. The virus will lay dormant in the host cell. This means that the host cell will continue on as usual and even undergo binary fission as usual. However, this also means that the viral DNA will be replicated into each new cell, still continuing to be a part of the bacterial genome. The viral DNA can remain dormant for many, many generations until outside influences weaken the repressor genes, such as exposure to UV light. From there, the viral DNA is excised from the host DNA and the virus becomes active. After the virus has become activated, it progresses in a fashion that is extremely similar to lytic replication. The viral DNA destroys the host genome, then replicates many times, and then synthesizes proteins in order to form a viral capsid. Then, with the RNA enclosed capsid, the virus is ejected from the host cell and leaves to find a new host and start the process all over again. During the cycle, lysogenic conversion can actually change the properties of the bacteria. This can greatly influence the development of pathogenicity in bacteria. In fact, prophages constitute one of the main sources of genetic diversity and strain variation associated with the virulence of many bacterial pathogens. Or, more simply put, lysogenic phages can carry genes that can enhance the virulence of the bacterial host. With the viral genes expressed within the bacterial genome, it can cause the bacteria to release potent toxins that can cause disease. Two examples of where lysogenic conversion has contributed to pathogenicity include E. coli and Clostridium botulinum. In E. coli, the prophage results in the release of Shiga toxins, which is released directly from E. coli. The Shiga toxins are some of the most potent biological toxins known and cause cell damage and death. In the case of Clostridium botulinum, or more simply known as botulism, a neurotoxin is produced that causes acute paralysis and attacks the nervous system. This can lead to difficulty breathing, muscle paralysis, and even death. In both of these cases, it was lysogenic conversion that played a role in the pathogenicity of the bacteria. Although very similar, there are some key differences between lysogenic conversion and lytic replication. The main difference is that the lytic cycle destroys the host cell, whereas lysogenic replication does not, and instead has the presence of a prophage sage. Additionally, in the lytic cycle, the DNA of the virus does not ever integrate into the host DNA. This is instead a key component of the lysogenic conversion. And third, DNA replication of virus takes place independently from the host DNA replication in this lytic cycle, unlike the lysogenic counterpart. Overall, the lysogenic cycle is a key component in the pathogenicity of bacteria. Viruses are difficult to treat because of this method, but also play a key component in the modern aspects of research, such as gene therapy and the use of viral vectors. However, it still marks just one small aspect in the complex world of microbiology.